I just think, are? No, we're not. We do that all the time. No, I'm going <laughs> to bend you in half. Is what I <laughs> no, not bending the truth is not what we're talking about. I think people are just being too sensitive. No one's talking passing the buck. I'm not saying it's not our fault. But the fact is, I think, and I'm going to speak for myself and the mayor, people dedicate their lives to public service. I know people, you know, I tell you, when I, were, I was a cop for 24 years, and I went and I was like, oh God, I can't wait to go work for private, you know, a private company, because I know then it's going to run efficiently. Let me tell you something. Police officers work their asses off. They work their asses off. And so do mayors, and so do people in government. And the problem is, it's very, this is a, do you think this is an easy place to manage? Do you like to be the police commission of freaking Baltimore? <laughs> Honestly. This is, I, you walk in, I get, first of all, I get the number two, I come in and you walk into this city that has been the heroin capital of America for a five bazillion years. It's had every failed social program the United States has ever put forth. They incarcerate people for who knows what reason. The community relations are horrendous. You walk in and people go, it's all your fault. It's crazy. There are a lot of people who need to be held accountable, you're right. But I think they go back to the same too. And I mean, the fact is, you know, do we talk about the fact that like, you know, most kids don't graduate high school in this town? And the fact that, you know, the ones that do can't read and write the English language? And then we wonder why they can't get jobs and they turn to crime? It's not the police department's fault. It just isn't. I mean, and these are issues that need to be addressed and they need to be addressed by, you know, the people who are in charge of those entities. And I just don't know if enough attention is given to it because there's so much day to day with the crime rate in the city. And I think that's all we're trying to get across is, I, I believe the police department has their role, but is it a role? It's a specific, defined role. And it's not to educate children in the city. It's, I don't believe any drug in this country should be illegal. I'm part of a group of police chiefs in America that believes it should all be legalized. It's part of legal. I've never believed it. I know. It's the stupidest thing. When the, when the war on drugs started, there were 200,000 people in prison. Now there's two million, and there's more people addicted than ever. How's that working out for everybody? <laughs> it's stupid as that. It's like, this hasn't worked, so let's do more of that. All right, and that's what yeah, we're but, doing. But look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. you, as a police chief, you're at the local level. Just look at what happens at the federal level and internationally. I mean, we are supplying the demand. We have the demand here for, for countries who survive. I used to do international business. Two places I visit every time I would travel all over the world. Prisons and schools. They don't tolerate anything in those countries. Crime, you steal, you take drugs, you're gone. The crime is zero in most of those countries. Developing countries. Education, bright kids share 40, 50 kids in the classroom. I mean, we have everything here. We, you know, so let's, I mean, let's look at where the drugs come from. That's like when, when I was, was mayor and I met with, this was under the Bush administration, the, the, um, the drug czar. And, I, and I, when the drug, drug czar was saying, oh, you know, I, we really want to focus on saying no to drugs in school. And I started telling them about that movie with Will Smith, The Enemy of the State, and how, they had cameras watching people all, all over the place. And I started talking about, well, what about you bringing the drugs into this country? Why don't you do stuff at your level? Don't be talking about, you know. Yeah, but, Megan, but, those, but those are yeah. facts when you talk about drugs. They are, but. <laughs> the problem is, and the point is, as a cop, and I, I would tell these guys, I don't care if you fill this room up with cocaine. You haven't made a dent in the drug problem no. in this country. Right. And you never will, so I don't care where it comes from. I don't care if they grow in Afghanistan or smuggling through Mexico. As long as it's illegal, it's gonna be in demand. And that's the reason we have 300 people or 250 people murdered every year. They're not killing each other for the drugs. They're killing each other for the money. And that's the problem, and I don't know why. We don't learn from prohibition. We don't learn from anything. If you make it illegal, this was illegal one day. And I look at the wall of police headquarters in New York City, there were more cops killed in the years of prohibition than any time except when they were being assassinated in the 70s. There's a reason for that. We don't learn. I don't think it should be against the law, period. And I think well, you can't legislate morality and until we learn that issue, we're going to be in this mess. You can't incarcerate you out of it. You're never going to stop it. You can put a cop every five feet on the border. It's coming in, period. People want it, it'll get here. Yeah, just, how do you break that cycle of people okay. wanting drugs and put it into treatment? 
It's a sickness. Well, it's not a well, lightness. Well, it's a it isn't. I agree. I agree with that. Right. It's a health issue.